What's up you guys, back here again with another video. First off, I want to say thank you to each and every one of you that left a comment on these past two videos. It's so great to see that some of you, uh, well all of you pretty much that commented are happy that I'm back and still give a shit about this channel. So thank you so much for that, I appreciate that. And some of you have been asking about the tapes, why I'm not showing any because, well that's because I can't listen to any, my tape decks fucked. But I have looked some up, they're not that pricey so I definitely will have those soon and I'm sorry if I sound a little weird for some reason I have allergies I guess it's been really dusty lately around here um, the weather at least so that's why I'm just a bit stuffy so I hope you guys don't mind but anyways <clears throat> head to uh, the other video I uploaded after this one you might have won this record hopefully one of you guys are the lucky winners and you guys enjoy that record uh, I will hold the drawing <clears throat> right after this video see my voice is breaking up already <clears throat> Damn, this is going to be fun, huh? But yeah, anyways, head to the video. Probably one of you guys won. Let me know. And yeah, I'm excited to hold that drawing already. I already have the names written down. I just need to pick them out. We'll get it going. But anyway, six records to show you guys today. Hopefully you guys enjoy them. This might be a shorter video uh, today, but nevertheless, hope you guys enjoy it. First one we're going to start off with is USBM One Master's Quiet Eye of Eternity. Now my first, um, well my two favorite tracks off of this record are a track that shouldn't have been separated into two parts, I don't know why they split it up, but it's the Destroyer parts one and two. This song contains a money riff, now a money riff if you guys don't know, is a riff, sorry, used by a band, uh, over and over in a song because it's just that damn good, and the Destroyer is definitely one of those songs, and one master knew what they were doing when they put that riff pretty much throughout the entire song. It's just that fucking good, you guys. Field of Ruins would definitely be my other favorite in this album. Uh, these guys were a blind buy for me, actually. Um, I found their CD for five bucks. It looked pretty cool, so I just bought it, along with Reclusive Blasphemy. Um, at least I think it was five bucks. That's what I remember. Um, but yeah, this one really stood out. <clears throat> stood out a lot. And um, I fucking love it. It's so fucking good. One Master's Quiet Eye of Eternity. I think I might actually spin it right after this is done. That song is just too damn good, you guys. So yeah, please check those out and let me know what you think. So next, we have some Spanish Death Grind, Machetazo with Ruin. Uh, yep, Spaniards uh, playing some really good uh, Death Grind. Uh, really good stuff, you guys. Sure, it's fast, of course, naturally, since it's Death Grind, but they are there are some slow tracks. <clears throat> My favorite one is actually one of the slower ones in here. It's Tanatorio, which stands for Mortuary. And you saw the track listing one in, in Spanish. But if you look here, the lyrics, there's English lyrics. I mean, Spanish lyrics, but English translations right underneath that. So that's pretty convenient for those of you who don't know Spanish. That won't stop you. Um, here we have the label there. Definitely my next one would have to be Masmora, which stands for Dungeon. Just love the guitar work and the drum work in that one. And... Tetrico would have to be my last top track on here. Um, just that groovy ass intro to that song always hooks me in. Fucking great album, you guys. The only Machetasa record I own. I really love that artwork, by the way. Yeah, it looks fucking sick. Um, but yeah, I need to get more Machetasa stuff. This is the only stuff I own by them, and it's not good. <clears throat> I don't know why my voice is just really fucking up right now. It wasn't this bad earlier. Jesus. <clears throat> Sorry, you guys. Whew, moving on to a fucking good one. Rocky Erickson and the Aliens with The Evil One. Some of the best psych rock you will ever listen to. There's a track listing and there's a crazy artwork right here in the front. Uh, the first time I heard about Rocky Erickson um, in general was Dank Buds and Black Metal's channel. One of my favorite channels on YouTube. Um, I'm not sure if he's still making videos, but... Um, he had one of the best collections I've ever seen, but anyways, I digress. Back to the record. Let me show you guys the label first off, because there's something pretty cool on there. It says Alien right underneath there. Uh, that weird lettering you see right underneath Rocky Erickson and the Aliens. Yeah, that stands for Alien, and that's Theban. <clears throat> the Theban alphabet apparently is, uh, what the witches used, apparently, back in the day. <laughs> and funny story with that one. When I was looking for a uh, Morbid uh, December Moon demo on CD, there was one version I found on Discogs a few years back. And it had that lettering in the track listing. Um, 
something was written down on it and I just couldn't understand what it said. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to look this up. I looked on like for hours online, probably no, probably like an hour. <laughs> I'm exaggerating. Uh, but yeah, I could not find what the fuck that was. I, you know, Googled um, ancient scripture. Um, just, I, I can't even remember. It just took me a while. Finally came upon that it was called uh, Theban. And that's what it is, in case some of you guys are wondering, because a lot of metal bands use that shit um, all over their uh, stuff, all over their albums. So yeah, T-H-E-B-A-N, the Theban alphabet. So yeah, if you guys did not know that, that's what it, that's what it is. But anyways, back to the album. Um, I digress. Uh, definitely my favorite song on this one would have to be Creature with the Atom Brain. Creature with the Atom Brain. Why? Definitely, if you guys listen to this song, you guys are going to have those songs stuck in your head. You're going to find yourselves hum humming them all day, just singing along with the choruses. It's They're very catchy songs, you guys. Some of the best guitar work I've ever heard. Um, my next favorite song, maybe Sputnik, then Stand for the Fire Demon, Two-Headed Dog. Just a bunch of classics on this record, you guys. I can't really choose the top three on this one. I really can't. Um, it's... Uh, Perfect fucking album, perfect songs, really. I can't find anything wrong with this one. Mine, mine, mine. Um, if you have Ghosts, White Faces, which the Devil's Blood covers. And I actually do prefer the Devil's Blood uh, version over uh, Rocky Erickson's, but regardless, this album is the shit, you guys. You guys need to check it out. Rocky Erickson, definitely a must listen. Uh, one of my favorites ever. So yeah, give this a listen and let me know what you guys think if you want to, you know, venture out into other genres besides metal. This would be a pretty good start or something to look into, definitely. So yeah, let me know what you guys think about The Evil One. Now moving on to, fuck, one of the greatest albums ever written. Life Lover with Pulver. Top track right off the top, MS Salmonella. The riffs on that song are the shit. This album is melancholic, dark, violent, menacing, sexual... You name it, it's in here. Now, we can't really call this straight out black metal, even though Life Lover sure does have black metal influences, elements in the music. It's more like depressive rock, I don't know. I can't really just call it black metal. Uh, let me show you guys the variant I got here. Beautiful fucking green, right there. Uh, definitely my next favorite track would have to be My Open Eye. Uh, I'm just gonna say the titles in English because I don't wanna fuck anything up or say it all fucked up in Swedish. <laughs> Definitely my third one would have to be Stockholm. I love that one. I uh, love the piano work and just how melancholic it sounds. I love this record so much. Perfect rainy day record. Uh, if you guys were looking for one, I came along Life Lover randomly on YouTube one day. And it's like the best thing that ever happened um, at that time because I just could not get enough of this album for a while. Bought it on CD. Uh, paid a pretty... It wasn't pricey, but it wasn't cheap, you know. Uh, it was a pretty cool copy to own. Maybe like, what, 20 bucks? 25 bucks? Yeah, I wasn't really used to paying for $20. Paying $20 for CDs, so Life Lover, it was definitely worth it. Um, I love this record so much. There's so much you can find in this record. It's for everybody, really, I think. If you want to just find dark music in general, I think this one will catch your attention. Sunday is fucking great. Hand of the Lord. Um... Break Sex, that's a really weird little interlude. It's fucking crazy. Yeah, really manic sounding, depressive. Anything you can think of, it's here. Please check this out. Let me know what you guys think. One of my favorites of all time. So glad it's finally part of the collection. And of course, the follow-up, Erotic. Just as fucking good, you guys. If not even more darker. And all of, the, all of that, what I said, just doubled. But of course, Pulver will always hold a special place in my heart so that will definitely be my long time life lover my favorite life my favorite life lover record for sure sorry you guys i can't even talk right now my voice is just killing me <clears throat> it's not letting me concentrate but anyways here we have this beautiful red variant of erotic best song on here i love to hurt you that shit is fucking great the double bass drum in that fucking song is what hooked me in and how the riffing goes along with it just perfectly. My second one would have to be Saltvatten, another uh, one of the more melancholic sounding songs in the record. And Host Depressioner is my third one for sure. Fucking love those songs. This record in its entirety. Just listen through 
through to it all and you'll see what I mean. Just so satisfying. Uh, both of these records, just go for it. Please let me know what you guys think, especially if you haven't heard of them, because I know they're going to surprise the shit out of many of you. So, hopefully you guys check this out. Let me know what you think, because I really, really love these records. You have no idea. Yeah, so please, check that shit out, you guys. And finally, we get to the last one. Many of you know this record. It's legendary in the black metal scene, if not uh, just for who the band is. Or the man is, and of course I'm talking about Burzum with Philosophum, Varg's opus, in my opinion, my favorite Burzum record. Um, this record, I mean, off the top, has special meaning to me. I mean, back when I, uh, me and my friends used to hang out, this would always be on the playlist. Um, Dunkle Heat would always be there, or Burzum, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> Varg really knew how to write black metal, and it's really evident in this album, especially when Dunkel Heat starts up. Or I'm going to call it Burzum, it's because I'm used to the English, or the English Norwegian track listing, because I listen to it mostly in my car, so that's how I have it written um, on my iPod, so that's the track listing I have memorized, so if you guys don't know that, if you guys are used to the German one, I'm sorry, but yeah, Burzum definitely is the best fucking song on the record, it's the best opener. I love how it starts, like it has such a fucking satisfying build up. Like it just keeps building up and building up and finally it gets to the climax, kinda, it's kinda dying down and then that fucking crunchy ass riff just comes in. Oh my god. This fucking record, you guys. Of course, I don't know if I mentioned it, Philosophem is supposed to mean Philosopheme. Um, let, me guys, let me show you guys the labels, I don't think I did that yet. But yeah, it's a back, black, blah, 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 back on black release, so uh, nothing too special. Um, it's on black vinyl, so standard black issued vinyl. Nothing wrong with that. Um, of course, Decrepitude 1 and 2 and the 25-minute instrumental, which I'm not even going to attempt to say. Uh, it starts with an R. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's one you could really zone out to and just reflect on life for sure. That's a really great fucking track. And of course, Jesus... Jesus Dead or Jesus Dot, Hezu Dot, whatever, right after Dunkle Heat. It's fucking great. It's such a great follow up. This record, honestly, just has nothing but riffs. And I think in this record, I think it's the tone really did get heavier and just deeper and darker. I mean, the coldness is always there with Burzum, uh, especially the first four records, definitely. Um, and yeah, like I said, the tone, I think it's, it's really a new Burzum sound. I mean, from going to, from these to this, it sounds a little deeper and just powerful. I don't know. This record just, it's, it's one for transcendence for sure. It just takes you other places. It's fucking great. Especially when you get to that instrumental. I mean, once you get through Dunkel, well, Burzum, um, Jesus, Todd, Beholding the Daughters of the Firmament, which has an amazing fucking riff. Oh my god. And then you finally get to um, that instrumental. And it's, well, no, it gets to Decrepitude 1, right? And then it's the instrumental. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it just comes out of nowhere. You're just not expecting that. And god, I just can't help but listen to it all throughout like it doesn't seem like 25 minutes when the song's over this album is just too fucking good you guys and if you guys have not heard this or you're just straying away from it from shit you've heard about Bird, about Varg and all his views just don't do it and check out Varg's channel by the way Thulean Perspective I fucking love his channel you could get um, a good two hours into him and you won't even realize it's two hours they're that good they're that interesting guy knows a lot of stuff um, but yeah, I love that channel, so check it out if you haven't. And most importantly, check this one out. Um, it took me a long time to finally get this one on vinyl. I don't know why it did, uh, but I finally have it in my collection, and I'm fucking stoked. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this vinyl update. Um, damn, 14 minutes. I'm not used to doing videos these short this short anymore. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this shorter version of <laughs> Analog Conjurations. I will definitely have more records to show you guys. Uh, next time, but uh, for now I really wanted to talk about these six 
And um, I should add uh, right off the top that I alphabetize my records, but the records that I haven't shown uh, to you guys, I keep them pretty much separately, you know, in another little cube, or and I have another separate box that I just put them in. And yeah, these were the first six that I was planning to talk about, and I'm glad I did. And hopefully you guys discovered something new, most importantly, and uh, yeah, just let me know if you did. I always love hearing about that, and let me know what you think about these albums, or how much you love them. Either way, um, anything you guys want to put down there, just put it down there. Leave a like if you want to, and thank you again for stopping by, and check if you won this record. I really want to know who the fuck won. Well, I'll hold the drawing right after this. Anyways, you guys, thank you so much. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.